must wait. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. We had not slept all night and I was very tired. I went to bed and woke late in the afternoon. I felt much better. I went downstairs. Holmes was reading a book. I saw at once that he was worried. Is there any news? I asked. Nothing at all. I can't understand it. I am very surprised and disappointed. My agents say that they cannot find the Aurora. Can I do anything to help? I asked. Nothing. Then I'll take Toby back to Pinchin Lane. Then I'll go and see Miss Morstan and tell her what has happened. I went to Miss Morstan's house. She looked very pleased to see me. I told her that we had not found the treasure yet, but she did not look disappointed. I was surprised about this, but I was also very pleased. I said goodbye to her and drove back to Baker Street. I went to bed, but I could not sleep. I was thinking about Miss Morstan. I wanted to ask her to marry me. All night I heard Holmes walking up and down in his room. Next morning he looked tired and ill. My agents cannot find the Aurora, he said impatiently. They have searched the whole river. The Aurora has disappeared. We waited all that day, but there was no news. The next day I woke early. It was still dark. To my surprise, Sherlock Holmes was standing by my bed. He was dressed and ready to go out. I have had an idea, Watson, he said. I am going up the river myself. Perhaps I can find the launch. You must stay here. There may be some messages. Holmes left without another word. That day, the time passed very slowly. I picked up a book but was unable to read it. I was thinking all the time about the wooden-legged man and the pygmy. Where were they? Why could Holmes not find them? I was worried about my friend. I knew that he was a clever detective, but perhaps this time he would not be able to catch the murderers. At three o'clock in the afternoon, I had a visitor. It was Inspector Jones, the police officer. I was astonished. Inspector Jones had changed completely. Two days ago, he had been very rude to Holmes. He had not wanted his help. Now he was very quiet and polite. Good afternoon, Dr. Watson, said Inspector Jones. I'm afraid that I uh, made a bad mistake. I have had to let Thaddeus Sholto go. Sholto has proved that he was at a friend's house when his brother died. Inspector Jones looked so sad that I began to feel sorry for him. I have received a telegram from Sherlock Holmes, the inspector went on. Here it is. I took the telegram and read it. Inspector Jones, go to Baker Street at once. Wait for me there. I know where Sholto's murderers are hiding. Come with us tonight if you want to catch them. Holmes. That's excellent, I cried. Forget about Thaddeus Sholto. You'll soon have some other prisoners, Inspector Jones. At that moment, the door opened and Holmes came into the room. He was smiling. What news? we asked together. I know where the Aurora is, Holmes replied. It wasn't on the river at all. The Aurora has been hidden in a boatyard near the river for two days. I knew the launch at once. Mordecai Smith, the owner, was there too. He was talking to someone, and he was speaking very loudly. He said that he had to have the Aurora ready for eight o'clock tonight. His two gentlemen were leaving for America. Their ship was waiting for them out at sea, and they must not be late. I knew immediately what they were planning to do, went on Holmes, and I know what we must do. Inspector Jones, will you help me? I was wrong before, and you were right, said Jones sadly. I didn't listen to you then, but I'll help you now. Good, said Holmes. We need a fast police launch, as fast as the Aurora. It must be ready this evening, and two or three strong policemen to come with us. 
I'll arrange all this, said Jones. Excellent, said Holmes. Tonight, the three of us, you and I and Dr. Watson, will be on the police launch. We will be waiting outside the boatyard at eight o'clock. We'll be ready for the Aurora when she comes out. We'll catch the murderers, and we'll get the treasure. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. At seven o'clock that evening, the three of us, Inspector Jones, Holmes, and myself, went down to the river. Both Holmes and I had guns in our pockets. Inspector Jones had promised to let us use the police launch. This launch was now waiting. Four strong men were on board the launch. Soon we were moving quickly down the River Thames. The police launch was very fast. We passed all the other boats on the river without difficulty. This pleased Holmes very much. By eight o'clock we had arrived opposite the boatyard where the Aurora was hidden. It was now dark. We waited. Ten minutes passed. Suddenly, a launch came out of the boatyard. It was black with two red stripes. It was moving very quickly. That's the Aurora, cried Holmes. Follow it quickly, faster, faster. We must catch them. We were going so fast that the police launch started to shake, but we could not get near to the Aurora. The chase became more and more exciting. We went in and out between other boats. Many times I closed my eyes. I was sure that we would hit something. At last we got closer to the Aurora. Inspector Jones turned on a light and shone it on the Aurora. "Stop!" he cried. "Stop! We are the police." In the lamplight, we could see some men on board the Aurora. One man was sitting at the back of the launch. Beside him was a strange, dark shape. We could also see Mordecai Smith, the owner of the Aurora. He was working as hard as he could. He was trying to make the engine of the launch go faster. Inspector Jones shouted again, "Stop!" Suddenly, the man at the back of the Aurora stood up. He shouted at us angrily. He was a big, strong man. Then I noticed that his right leg was missing. There was a wooden stump in its place. This was the wooden-legged man. At the sound of the man's voice, the strange, dark shape beside him moved. It was a small, dark man, the smallest man I have ever seen. But the pygmy's head was large. His face was hard and cruel. As soon as Holmes saw the pygmy, he took out his gun. I did the same. Shoot him if he moves his hand," said Holmes. At that moment, the pygmy put a short piece of wood to his lips. We fired our guns together. The pygmy fell backwards into the water with a terrible cry. The wooden-legged man turned the Aurora towards the bank of the river. As soon as the Aurora touched the bank of the river, he jumped out. It happened so quickly that we were not able to slow down and stop the police launch. The man had landed in the soft, wet mud of the river bank, but his wooden leg had stuck in the mud. He could not move. We managed to turn the police launch round. We went towards the wooden-legged man and threw him a rope. Then we pulled him up over the side of our launch. Mordecai Smith was still on the Aurora, but he did not try to escape. We tied the Aurora to our launch. The chase was over. On the deck of the Aurora, there was a big, heavy chest. We were sure that it contained the Agra treasure. We carried the heavy box onto the police launch. Suddenly, Holmes stopped and pointed. "Look," he said. I looked where Holmes was pointing. I saw one of the pygmy's poisoned thorns. It was fixed in the wood where Holmes and I had been standing. The poisoned thorn had passed through the air between us. Holmes was smiling, but I felt cold and sick. We had escaped a horrible death. As we went back up the river, we shone our light on the water. We were looking for the body of the pygmy, but we saw nothing. His body still lies somewhere at the bottom of the river Thames.
The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The wooden-legged man was our prisoner. He was sitting in the police launch opposite the treasure chest. He was about fifty years old. He had black curly hair and a black beard. He did not look angry any more. He was not interested in anything. What's your name? Holmes asked him. Jonathan Small, replied the man. Jonathan Small, repeated Holmes. He took out the piece of paper which had been found in Captain Morstan's luggage. Holmes read out what was written on the piece of paper. Jonathan Small, Mohammed Singh, Abdullah Khan, Dost Akbar, the sign of four. Give me that paper, said the man. Holmes gave it to him. Yes, Small said. I am one of the sign of four. This paper is a plan of the fortress at Agra in India. My three friends and I found the treasure many years ago. Tonight, I have lost the Agra treasure, and you have killed my dear friend, Tonga. I'm not sorry about the deaths of Sholto and his son. I'm not sorry about anything. Do what you like with me. You will tell us your story later, said Holmes. But first, Watson, would you take the treasure to Miss Morstan? I shall be pleased to do that, I said. But I was not speaking the truth. I did not want to take the treasure to Miss Morstan. I did not want her to become a rich woman. Inspector Jones and I will take our prisoner to Baker Street, said Holmes. We'll meet you there, Watson. Then Holmes turned to Jonathan Small. But where is the key of the treasure chest? At the bottom of the river, replied Jonathan Small. Why did you throw it away? cried Inspector Jones angrily. You've made things very difficult for us. Jonathan Small did not speak. He did not care what Jones said. When we got to the jetty, I got out of the launch with the treasure chest. I found a cab and drove to Miss Morstan's house. Miss Morstan was sitting by the window. She was wearing a pretty white dress, and her hair was shining brightly in the lamplight. How nice to see you, she said when she saw me. Do you have any news? I've brought something better than news, I said, trying to speak happily. I've brought the Agra treasure. I put the heavy chest down on the table. Miss Morstan did not look very excited. So... This is the famous Agra treasure, she said. Yes, I replied. Half of it belongs to you, and half to Thaddeus Sholto. You are a rich woman now, Miss Morstan. The treasure can wait, she said. First, I want to hear all about your adventures. Please sit down and tell me everything. So I told her everything that had happened. I told her how Holmes found the Aurora, I told her about Inspector Jones and Thaddeus Sholto. I told her about the chase on the river, the death of the pygmy, and how we had caught Jonathan Small. How brave you are, she said. I didn't know that you were in such terrible danger. It's finished now, I said. Let's open the treasure chest. There isn't a key. How can we open the chest? Miss Morstan left the room and came back with a heavy metal bar. I took the bar and put it under the lid of the chest. Then I turned it and the lid opened. I lifted up the lid. My hands were shaking. We both looked inside. Then we looked at each other in astonishment. The chest was empty. The chest was made of very thick iron. This was why it was so heavy. The treasure is lost, said Miss Morstan quietly. Thank God, I said. Why do you say thank God? asked Miss Morstan. Because now I can ask you to marry me, I replied, holding her hand. Because I love you, Mary. Now you are not going to be rich, so I can tell you my feelings. 
That is why I said, thank God. Then I say, thank God, too, she whispered. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. When I got back to Baker Street, Holmes, Inspector Jones and the prisoner, Jonathan Small, were all waiting for me. I showed them the empty treasure chest. Small began to laugh. Where is the treasure, Small? shouted Jones angrily. The Agra treasure belongs to the sign of four, said Small quietly. No one else will have it. I threw it all to the bottom of the river. We all stood astonished. The great treasure of Agra was lost for ever. The Agra treasure is unlucky, said Small. It has never brought happiness to anyone. It brought death to Captain Morstan. It brought fear and guilt to Major Sholto. Bartholomew Sholto was murdered because of it. And to me and the other members of the Sign of Four, it has brought prison for the rest of our lives. You must tell us your story, said Holmes. What is the Sign of Four? Jonathan Small began his strange story, and we listened. I went to India as a soldier in the British Army, said Small. One day, soon after I arrived, I had an accident and lost my leg. After that, I could not fight any more. Then there was terrible fighting between the Indians and the British. The British all hid in an old fortress at Agra. They shut themselves inside. The walls of this fortress were very thick. The Indians could not get in. I also went to Agra. I had three Indian friends who had fought for the British. They came to Agra with me. These men were Mohammed Singh, Abdullah Khan and Dost Akbar. When we were in the Agra fortress, we heard a strange story. It was about a great treasure which had been hidden in the fortress. It had been hidden for many years. The four of us decided to look for this treasure. And one day, we found it. It was hidden under the floor in a secret room. We were astonished by what we had found. We had never seen so many beautiful jewels. The four of us decided not to say anything about what we had found. We decided to leave the treasure hidden in the secret room in the fortress. When the fighting was finished, we would be able to take the treasure away with us. We made a promise to each other. We agreed that we would always work together. We would share the treasure between us. We became the sign of four. But a terrible thing happened. Two British soldiers were killed in a fight. We had not killed them, but we were arrested for their murder. We were sent to prison in the Andaman Islands. Is that where you met Major Sholto and Captain Morstan? asked Holmes. Yes, said Small. Sholto and Morstan were the officers in charge of the prisoners there. We were in a terrible situation. We knew where the Agra treasure was, but we were not able to go and get it. We were prisoners. Also, we were afraid that someone else might find the treasure. We did not know what to do. At last, we told Shoto and Morstan about the great treasure. We asked them to help the four of us to escape. When we were free, we would get the treasure and share it with them. But Shoto said that he did not believe us. He said he did not know if we were speaking the truth. Shoto did not know if the treasure would be there. He said he would go to India. If he found the treasure, he would come back. He would help us escape from prison. Sholto asked the four of us to give him a plan of the fortress at Agra. We did not want to give Sholto the plan. I didn't trust him. But in the end, we had to agree. We gave one plan to Sholto and another to Morstan. Sholto went to India. 
but he never came back. He found the treasure and took it to England. He stole it from the sign of four, and also from his friend Morstan. And from that day, I decided to have revenge on Sholto. Small was silent for a few moments. He was thinking about what Sholto had done. Then he went on with his story. I made friends with one of the people of the Andaman Islands, he said. The people there are pygmies. They are very small, but they are very brave. One day, I found one of these pygmies lying under a tree. He was very ill. I looked after him. He slowly got better. He became my friend. His name was Tonga. Tonga helped me to escape from the islands. He had a small boat. One dark night, we put lots of food into the boat and we sailed together from the Andaman Islands. Holmes had been listening carefully while Small told his story. Now he spoke. Ah, I understand, he said. Major Sholto received a letter. What was written in the letter frightened him to death. It must have been the news of your escape which killed him. Small went on with his story. At last Tonga and I reached London. But I was too late to have revenge on Sholto. Sholto was dying. He saw my face at the window. That night I got into his room and left a message. It was from the sign of four. Tonga and I waited six years. We watched Pondicherry Lodge and Bartholomew Sholto carefully. When Bartholomew Sholto found the treasure, we knew about it immediately. With Tonga's help, I got into his room. Tonga killed Bartholomew Sholto with a poisoned thorn. We took the treasure, left the paper, and went. I had paid Mordecai Smith to take us to a ship. We were planning to go to America. But now everything has changed. Tonga is dead, and I am your prisoner. And the Agra treasure is lost forever. We were all silent. We were thinking of the great treasure which was lost in the mud at the bottom of the River Thames. Perhaps it was better there. Dr. Watson, said Holmes, when Inspector Jones had taken Small away. That is the end of our adventure. Yes, I said, but I have some very good news. Miss Morstan and I are going to get married. Excellent, said Holmes. The Agra treasure has at last brought happiness to someone. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The Newspaper Chase The time is one o'clock in the morning. The place is the Wrightsville Town Art Gallery. A window opens and a man comes in. His name is Harry Black, and he is a thief. It is dark in the art gallery, but Harry has a light. He looks across the room at a painting. There it is, he says. Harry moves quickly across the room. He stands and looks at the painting. A million dollars for this, he thinks. I don't understand it. But he takes a knife from his coat. Then he takes the painting very, very slowly from its frame. Harry goes back across the room to the window, but he walks into a table. There is a beautiful blue glass vase on the table. 
it falls on the floor and breaks into a hundred pieces. Harry smiles. Is that a million-dollar vase? he thinks. It isn't now. He runs across the pieces of glass to the window. Harry has a room in Mrs. Allen's rooming house. He goes quietly up to his room and closes the door. Mrs. Allen and her daughter, Janie, are sleeping. They don't hear him. In his room, Harry takes the painting from his bag. He puts it in a newspaper, then he puts the newspaper under his bed. In the morning, Janie Allen is in the kitchen. She's putting old bottles into a box. Recycling is important, Janie thinks. On the TV, a reporter is at the Wrightsville Art Gallery. He is talking about the painting. It's a million-dollar painting, he is saying. Here's a photo of it. Now the reporter is talking about the blue glass face. It's in a hundred pieces now, he says. Janie looks at the photo of the vase. Then she asks her mother, Do you have any old bottles? No, Mrs. Allen says. That's all, Janie. But the newspaper recycling truck is coming today. Of course, Janie says. It's Friday. Harry isn't in his room. He is talking on his telephone to a man in Seattle. The man wants the painting, but Harry isn't happy. Five thousand dollars? Harry says. No, it's a million dollar painting. What? No, I want fifty thousand, not five. What? The painting? Yes, I have it. And it's okay. Janie is looking for old newspapers. Early on Friday mornings, she takes them from every room in the house. Then, later, the newspaper recycling truck arrives. Janie opens Harry's door and looks into his room. She always takes his old newspapers or bottles for recycling. Ah, she thinks, there's a newspaper under Harry's bed. Janie puts the old newspapers into a black recycling box. She runs from the house and sees the truck. Wait, she says, and she quickly gives the box to one of the men. Harry is coming back to the house. He sees the recycling truck, and he sees Janie. It's Friday, he says. The newspaper. Oh, no. Harry chases after the truck. Wait! Wait! He says. Janie watches him. What is he doing? She thinks. Harry jumps into the back of the truck. I want my newspaper, he says. Where's my newspaper? But, there are thousands of newspapers in the truck. Janie walks quickly from the house to the truck. Why is your newspaper important, Harry? She asks. It's two days old. But Harry doesn't hear her. He is thinking, My million-dollar painting, where is it? The men from the recycling truck are watching Harry, too. But now Janie is looking at Harry's shoe. There's some blue glass in Harry's shoe, Janie thinks. Where? 
Oh! Suddenly, she remembers the photo of the blue glass face on the TV. She looks again at the piece of glass in Harry's shoe. Is it from the vase in the art gallery? She thinks. Is Harry Black the thief? The men from the recycling truck are angry. We're going now, they are saying. We're late. But I want my newspaper, Harry says. In the house, Janie is talking to the police on the telephone. Maybe I'm wrong, she is saying. But there's blue glass in his shoe. What? Yes, he's looking for the newspaper now. Two policemen arrive quickly. Let's look at your shoe, they say to Harry. Harry doesn't understand. What's wrong? he asks. One of the policemen takes the glass from Harry's shoe. This is a very expensive piece of glass, he says, from a very expensive vase. Remember? Suddenly, Harry understands. Oh, no! he says. Police cars and policemen arrive. The men look in the truck for the million-dollar painting. Later, they find the right newspaper, and they find the painting. Good work, Janie, one of the policemen says. And there's a reward. Maybe I can buy a painting with a reward, Janie says. I like pictures.